Jetpack Compose is a declarative UI framework. You describe what your UI should contain, and Compose handles the rest. This way of writing UI is very different from views. In this video, we'll cover the difference between the two and how you can shift your thinking to build apps with Compose. With views, you describe step by step how to get your UI to look a certain way. You do this by defining UI in XML, finding views from XML in code, and then calling setter functions to get your UI to look the way you want. With Compose, you no longer have to write XML. UI can entirely be described in code in Kotlin, taking full advantage of Kotlin constructs. Constructing UI by describing what, not how, is a key difference between Compose and Views. It's what makes Compose much more intuitive to work with. Let's take a look at a sample survey app called JetSurvey. The screen shows a single choice question the user has to answer. Once they make a selection, they can then proceed to the next question. To understand how to think about building this in Compose, let's first look at how we might build this using views. To simplify things, we'll look at a single component in the screen, a single answer in the survey. This component is composed of an image, some text, and a radio button, all arranged horizontally. In views, these elements would all be defined in XML. To populate the views with UI state, we would have to obtain a reference to each view in Kotlin or Java in our fragment or activity using findViewById. After obtaining references, we would then mutate each view by calling setter functions like setImage or setText to display the desired UI state. When state changes, for example, when a user selects an answer, the view that was interacted with would appear selected. In our example, when a user selects an answer in the question, we also want the next button to be enabled. So if we want other views to update as a side effect of a view being selected, we would have to set a listener to that view and explicitly mutate other affected views. But having to manually update views when state changes is error prone. It's possible to forget to update a view with its dependent state, and it's also easy to create illegal states when multiple updates conflict in unexpected ways. What if your app goes through a configuration change, like a screen rotation? And in the process, you might correctly remember the selection from the user, but you might forget to re-enable the next button. Synchronizing state changes throughout the lifespan of an app is a recurring challenge when working with views. This problem also increases in complexity as the number of views and dependent states grow in your app. It's a solvable problem, but it's a common source of bugs. Let's switch gears and see how we can think about building this component in Compose. In Compose, we would construct the UI in a similar fashion, in a container arranged horizontally with an image, text, and a radio button. Instead of writing this in XML, we would define our elements directly in code, in Kotlin. Doing it this way, we no longer have to jump between XML and code, as the UI would already be declared in code. In Compose, UI elements are functions and not objects. This means you can't find a reference to them and call methods to mutate them. Instead, UI elements are entirely controlled by the state or arguments that you pass. Here, we are just describing what our UI should look like. No calls to find view by ID, set image, or set text. Our UI is described succinctly in the functions we are calling. To display the UI state that we want, we're passing the answer's properties to the image function, to the text function, and for now, let's just pass false to the radio button function, which shows it as unselected. Another important distinction here from views is that tapping this answer will not show the item as selected. This is because we're always providing false to the radio button, meaning that it will stay unselected regardless of user interaction. Unlike in views, the radio button doesn't hold its own state that automatically changes due to a user event. But rather, the radio button state is controlled by the values that are provided into it. This is what we mean by what, not how. We're declaring what our UI should look like by providing the necessary state to our UI functions, but we're not telling Compose how it should render that state. So if state controls the UI, how do we go about updating state to update the UI? In Compose, we do that through events. When a user interacts with a UI element, the UI emits an event, such as onClick, 
and the event handler can then decide if the UI state should be changed. If UI state changes, the functions, or UI elements, that depend on that state will be re-executed. This process of regenerating the UI when state changes is called recomposition. The process of converting state into UI and state changes causing UI to regenerate is at the core of how Compose works as a UI framework. Let's revisit our example and update our implementation so that the radio button gets toggled when it's clicked. First, let's define a Boolean variable called selected and pass that into the radio button function argument. Next, in the onClick event handler, let's change the selected value to be the opposite of its current value. This way, when it's clicked, it toggles the selection state. With this change, we should now see the radio button being toggled when clicking on it. Notice that I left out the implementation of the selected variable, because for this to work, we have to use a special state object, which we'll cover in the next video. In a production app, the state of the radio button should come from the answer state object, but we kept it like this to showcase how radio button state works. To summarize, to think and compose, we declare what we want our UI to contain, but we don't tell it step by step how to do it, unlike views. We use Kotlin functions to represent our UI elements, we pass in state to control UI, and we use events to update state, which in turn updates our UI. This was a really high level overview of how to think and compose, but there's so much more to learn. For instance, how do these Kotlin functions work? What does state look like? What are the different components provided in Compose? We'll answer those questions in the upcoming episodes. Check out the resources below to learn more. If you like this video, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the Android Developers channel to see more videos on Compose. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>